Hey guys, welcome to another Built on AWS series. In this series, we are going to focus on containers on AWS. So in the next couple of videos, we'll be building a CI-CD or a continuous integration and continuous deployment workflow for a containerized Angular application. Well, so far, we have been building various serverless applications. But this series is solely focused on Docker containers and how to deploy them on AWS in different manners. All right, so this is our diagram. So in this project, we will have an Angular application like I previously mentioned, and we will have two separate containerized environments. The first one is for development and the other one is for production. So this video, we will have an introduction to the development environment and afterwards we'll start building that. So here we have an Angular application that was created with Angular CLI. So when you spin up a new application, an Angular application, you will have these files, index.html, app.component, app.module.js, so on. So these files will be saved or created inside our hard disk. Now, in order to containerize this application, we have to put this Angular app into a container. So in this slide, the Angular application is shown inside a container. Now this yellow color box is a container inside our hard disk. So as you can see, we have our local environment as it is. Apart from that, we have our Angular application, the same HTML, app module.js, all these files, the copy of those files in a container. Well, I think you guys are familiar with what a container is. For those who don't know, a container is an isolated resource section in your computer. Now, where can these containers be run? It can be run on your local machine, it can be run on your server or virtual machine, etc. Well, I mentioned containers are isolated resource sections, right? So, in order to run your containers in isolation, the containerization technologies like Docker, they, they use namespacing and control groups in Linux operating system. With namespacing and control groups, you can assign a separate space in the hard disk and space in the network or the network stack for your container. So you can run application in complete isolation from the rest of your other containers and also from the rest of your local machine programs. Now I'm using a Mac. Well, in order to run containers, I have to have Linux. So for that, I will be installing a program called Docker for Mac. So with that program, it enables me to run Linux or the light version of Linux version that our Docker containers will be run upon. Okay, back to the diagram. So now we have an Angular application inside a container and we have copied our Angular application files from the local machine into the container as well. So when we are developing the application, we'll be spending most of our time in the local machine. So we'll be changing these files, adding new files, components, directives, etc. So how can we reflect these file changes, you know, editing a file or adding a new file to the corresponding files inside the container? So how do we do this mapping? So that's where the volume mapping concepts comes into the picture. So we will be adding a volume mapping between our Angular application in the container to our local machine. So let's go to the next slide. So this is the volume mapping. So when we create a volume mapping, it will rather reference these files from the container rather than copying them inside the container itself. So when the changes are happening, those changes in the files will be immediately visible in the container. So the features like live reloading in Angular will still work inside the container as well. Now at this point, you might wonder why we need to dockerize our local development at all. Well, we can use the local systems to develop it. Why would we need to create another Docker container inside here? Well, assume that you might add multiple other containers in future. For example, let's say you added a database container and also a caching container. So, and other multiple containers like let's say application server, etc. 
So when you're adding more containers or when your application is getting more complex, you have to add several other containers to cater for those needs. So when you dockerize these containers, you can easily link them together. Because obviously these containers has to work together. So this linking part can easily be done when you dockerize your applications. So we'll be using a tool like Docker Compose in order to link these containers very easily. Assume that you are working with a team and you have done dockerizing your web application. So those configuration of the Docker files and Docker Compose file, you will be pushed into a remote repository or maybe let's say GitHub so that your other team members can clone them and simply use it. So the other team member who doesn't have any of these softwares installed, let's say that he doesn't have Angular, MongoDB, if you are using a MongoDB database, even though he doesn't have those uh, softwares installed, when he run a command like docker compose up, so those containers will be automatically started up and install those relevant versions of those softwares immediately and it will be up and running, your application will be up and running in matter of seconds or minutes. So they don't have to manually install dependencies of the database, app servers, etc. Which is quite a hideous task and with Docker, it made it really simple. I think now you know why we should Dockerize our local environment as well. Let's do that in the next video. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.